Okay, this podcast would be about meditation and it is for the beginners. It's for all those people who have started or thinking of starting meditation. And before we proceed, I would like to make an emphasis that this is not in any way an initiation and it's not to be taken as a proper instruction into the art of meditation. This video is just to cover certain aspects, certain dilemmas, certain questions with which all meditators, um, I guess, battle at some point um, of their practice and especially at the beginning. So please do not take this as an instruction in meditation um, because meditation has to be learned from a qualified, certified teacher. It has to be learned preferably on one on one basis and usually meditation is being um, kind of transmitted in some kind of form of an initiation. So we cannot really do this in this podcast. This podcast just to cover certain basic, um, let's say, difficulties with which meditator might um, be faced with at an early stage of his or her practice. So the main thing is that meditation is a very natural activity. You have to understand right from the beginning that meditation is not something that you have to do in order to succeed. It's just like going to sleep. When you go to sleep, you're tired, you close your eyes, you know, you find a comfortable position and there you are, you know, you drift it off to, in a nice, beautiful sleep. Meditation is pretty much the same. Meditation, in fact, or the state of transcendence, is a state of consciousness, just as waking, dreaming or deep sleep. So, when we go into meditation, we are not applying any effort to get there. No effort whatsoever is needed in order to experience what is actually our natural state. Our mind abides in meditation in those moments when it rests. And we do meditate spontaneously throughout the day, it's just we're not conscious about it and we're not aware of that. But everyone does. There's not a single person who does not meditate from time to time occasionally. There may be very small vestiges of those meditations, but they are there. It is impossible because that's the way nature has intended. That's the way our physiology works. So, um, the good thing about meditation is that you can do it anywhere as long as you are alone or in a company of people who are also doing the same thing and you're sitting comfortably and hopefully there's nothing that is disturbing you so you should switch off your mobile phone and all the other equipment that might uh, disturb the silence you know, all this kind of uh, unnecessary uh, activity around you should be minimized so, you know, like Ideally, you should have your own room where you can meditate. If you don't have that luxury, that's not a problem. You can meditate anywhere, on a sofa, which you use for many other activities throughout the day. That could become your meditation spot. If it is too hard for you to sit cross-legged, then that's not a problem. You can sit comfortably as long as your spine is straight and not slouching back too much. So you shouldn't really, you know, kind of lean backwards too much in order to uh, feel comfortable. It has to be comfortable, natural, so that there is uh, no strain in your body. So once you sit it comfortably, all you need to do is to slowly close your eyes 
and use whatever technique you have been taught. Whether this is your, if your meditation is based on mantra, you just gently pick up that syllable, that word, that mantra. If your meditation is based on some kind of visualization, or if it's based on uh, some kind of other techniques, you just proceed as you will. But the main thing to know, and the main thing to be aware, is that thoughts that will inevitably come in meditation are not to be fight against, not trying to discard the thinking process. This is one of the most common mistakes all meditators do. They try to have meditation in a kind of a Buddha style, <laughs> when there is no thoughts whatsoever, where you're completely submerged in Nirvana, but that's not happening. The more you fight the thoughts, the more thoughts will appear. It's impossible to fight the thought. So one of the main thing is to allow the thoughts come and go as they will. So this, this has to be understood properly. That thought process is a natural process. It's a natural working of the mind. And with time, the thoughts will subside on their own. Do not try to fight them. Do not try to have thoughtless meditation. It's futile. You'll never succeed. The more you fight, the more thoughts will appear. Just observe them as they come and go without any undue attention. Simply as the passing clouds that pass through the sky, you know, do you really give much attention? You know, this cloud is of that shape, this cloud is of that form. No, just passing as they come. In the same way with the thoughts. Keep bringing your attention gently, without any force, without any strain, back to your mantra or whatever object of meditation you have. There are meditations which are based on breath, on breathing, you know, when one's attention is on inhalation and exhalation. You can do that too. And even then, your attention should not be forceful attention, it should be a very natural attention, just as natural as the breathing itself. We don't think when we breathe. It happens spontaneously. In the same way, we do not do anything with focusing our attention on whatever the object of our meditation is and just allowing the uninterrupted flow of awareness towards that object of meditation. That was, that what the true meaning of meditation is. The uninterrupted flow of awareness towards the object. An object in this case is whatever the focal point of your meditation. So again, it's a natural process. Very little need to be done. There's no need to strain, there's no need to focus, there's no need to concentrate even. All you need to do is to relax your body, relax your mind, relax all the nerves and fibers and cells of your being and sink into that beautiful, spontaneous process of what meditation essentially is. Enjoy it, feel every sensation and just go with the flow. When you 
have finished meditating, however long you meditate, however long your meditation is, whether it's 20 minutes, half an hour or longer, in the same manner just gently, gently bring your awareness back to the senses. Bring your awareness gently to the awareness of the environment. Just sense the sounds out of you that you've been basically shut off if your meditation was strong enough. Gently, slowly open your eyes and just sit for a while, for a while and repose. Do not jerk off from meditation. Do not jump into any other activity. Especially if you've meditated longer than 20 minutes to half an hour. If your meditation was longer than that, like up to an hour, you might want to lie down wherever you are and just rest your spine, rest your limbs and lie on your back in Shirvasana, the corpse pose known in yoga and just open the palms of your hands and rest. This is very good. Five to ten minutes of rest will never hurt. The consciousness flowing into the being of your body. Of your, of your body. So, what you have to take from this talk is that meditation is a natural and spontaneous activity. There is nothing that we do in order to meditate. We just allow that to happen and it happens spontaneously. We can meditate anywhere, at any time. Of course, there are preferable times, there are times when meditation is the most beneficial and is the strongest. Usually it's the time in between, between the sunrise and the sunset. It is at the time of the change in the physiological humors of the body. Usually when both nostrils are open, and if you check them, both nostrils open means your body is ready to meditate. Because when one nostril is predominantly breathing, means the left or right hemisphere of the brain is more active. But that is not a, an obstacle for meditation. It is preferable to meditate when the left nostril is predominantly working, because that means that all these faculties associated with intuition will be more in tune and less forceful thinking naturally will happen. But when both nostrils are open, this is the best time for meditation. So, with time you will learn when your physiology itself is more predispositions towards that meditation, towards that process of transcendence. You can meditate in a park if the weather allows, you can meditate on the couch, you can meditate as a backseat driver, you can meditate you know, anywhere, really. But make sure that you meditate preferably at the same time every day, because then your nervous system will almost follow that kind of Pavlovian reaction, and each time you sit down to meditate, it will be that much easier to transcend. You will try and you will see. The experience is the mother of all knowledge. Jai Gurudev.